Hey, what's going on everyone? RC84 here, and like always, thanks for watching. Well, my friends, back here with my uh, newest RC boat, the FTO11 RC racing boat, and I have to say, this boat is pretty sweet, my friends. Now, I do want to talk about some, uh, some issues that I have with the boat. Uh, when I first took it out for its first run, which I did not film it that day, I was kind of like very excited about it. I was like, I want to get this thing in the water and test it out and see how it does. You know, I've seen plenty of videos on YouTube of it running, but I was like, you know, I really want to experience it myself. So uh, I took it out, and uh, when I got to the pond there, I uh, tried turning it on, and I just was not having any luck at whatsoever. And I was having problems with the radio binding to the receiver. And uh, of course, that day I went out, I didn't have any tools or anything like that with me. And so I was like, well, I have to cut my day short and go back to the house, try to figure out what's going on with this thing. So I get back to the house, I uh, you know start doing some troubleshooting, make sure that ESC has power, which it did. Uh, it's like, all right, well, it's gotta be the receiver and controller. So I took it out and put one of my other uh, controllers and receivers in there and the boat came on, no problem. Uh, it's like, okay, so it's gotta be the radio. Uh, so I was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the, you know, the stock radio back in and uh, see if I can fix it. And for some odd reason, I don't know why it, is, why, why it is or why I did this, but usually, you know, you're supposed to turn on the remote, then your, your vehicle. Well, I did it reversed. I decided to turn the battery or plug up the battery and then turn on the remote. And then I heard that beep beep. I was like, oh, okay, now you're binding to each other. So, uh... It started working so the stock remote and uh, receiver binded together started working I was like alright cool now I can go out and do a run video of it which I did that and uh, it did great uh, super fast and everything but I was also having another issue and the issue I was having was with the steering the steering was not uh, sharp at all it uh, there was a lag on, on the uh, on the steering of it and no matter how many times I adjusted the settings on the controller uh, I just could not figure it out so I took it back to the house after doing you know somewhat the run video there and I uh, started investigating a little bit I was like okay maybe the uh, where the uh, the rod connects to the servo to the rudder you know this little rod right here the servo rod, if you want to say, I think it is. Uh, I was like, maybe it's in the wrong position. So I tried to adjust that. Um, and no, that wasn't the problem. That it was actually perfect on the, on, the, on the dime there. But I noticed on the back of the rudder, there was these two little plastic tabs, one on each side. And I've seen this a lot on Tamiya vehicles, because I had a few Tamiya vehicles in the past year. Uh, the unnecessary plastic that's on like the steering knuckles and stuff. Well, there's two little tabs on each side of the rudder and it was kind of blocking the, uh, the maximum turnability of, uh, of the boat. So what I ended up doing, I ended up cutting them off, grinding them down, if you can see that. I'm trying to get a good view for you guys. Uh, but yeah, so I was, uh, so I grinded them down, took it back out and it did awesome. Sharp turns thing really just moved through the water uh, it was great <laughs> a lot of fun with it and then uh, of course I had another little incident but that was all mine that was not you know factory you know, fault uh, I actually forgotten to tighten up the uh, or, or screw nut here or the locking nut or what <laughs> the little Allen nut key I yeah whatever <laughs> whatever you call it I can't remember sometimes uh, yeah, <laughs> but I've forgotten to tighten it down. So it, you know, as I got through my little run there, uh, it come undone, and the you know, boat made it back to shore. And uh, yeah, but <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, it's just an awesome, fun little boat to have uh, for the money I paid for it, a hundred and thirty dollars. Uh, that's with a controller, a 4S LiPo battery, to charger, uh, the boat stand, of course, you know, the little plastic boat stand. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it's just an awesome little vehicle. Now, another thing that uh, I do want to point out to you guys, if you're planning on getting this boat or you got this boat, uh, you might be experiencing this problem here. This has got a double hatch on it, so it's got the top hatch and it's got a hatch 
that goes over your electronics to kind of protect it a little bit from the water and stuff like that, which is awesome. ProBoat does that on some of their vehicles. Uh, yeah, I think it's ProBoat. Yeah, ProBoat. Yeah, ProBoat does that where they put like a little tough, you know, tough wear can lid on top of it to help you know keep the water and stuff out of your uh, out of the boat and stuff. Well. Uh, when you have both those on there, it's hard to get the top off. And uh, when I pulled up to the pond that day to run it, just to test it out, you know, after all the stuff I did, I was having trouble getting it open up. And I was like, you know, it's it's getting really dark. You know, I really want to get this thing out there and test it out, and see how it's running. And I could not get it. And of course, I didn't have any tools in my truck. Usually, I carry a, uh, a couple, you know, screwdrivers with me, but I did not have any in my vehicle. And so I had to end up using a penny to pop open the lid. And uh, yeah, so you might want to come up with a way to get the lid up or get it off of the uh, off the boat. Maybe uh, rigging up a small you know, hook or a screw or something, some way of actually popping this thing off. Uh, maybe, you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you can come up with some kind of a way of actually getting this top off because it is pretty snug and uh, not much water gets in there. I was, you know, taking this thing all types of ways, turning it, twisting it, all, all different ways. I have not flipped the boat yet. Believe it or not, I have not flipped it because I really want to test out the self, uh, a self, uh, the, the, the self right <laughs> on it, but uh, I know I just could toss it in the water and, and do it. But it's like I really want to do it while I'm driving and, and see, you know, would it you know, actually do it? So I never got to uh, do that yet, but overall, it's a great boat. I recommend it to anybody. Uh, you can get them for about 120 130 on uh, Bang, banggood.com, I think. Um, they have two versions. They have one without the battery and one with the battery. Of course, the one with the battery is going to be a little bit more. Uh, I think that was like $120, and then with uh, shipping charge, it was like uh, $134 or something like that. You can also get them on eBay for about $156 here in the U.S., uh, so it really depends on where you want to go. Uh, it didn't take too long from Banggood, which can't, it was coming from China. It didn't take too long for it to come in because I paid the extra shipping charge to, uh, to kind of get it here because I really didn't check eBay. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I have to say on this boat, my friends. It is a fun boat. I would recommend it for anybody who wants to get a good, fast RC boat. Uh, brushless boat, that is. I'm about to drop it. <laughs> but yeah, and uh, I definitely have some plans for it. I might actually repaint this thing a different color. Uh, I have a you know crazy you know, idea of what I actually want to do, uh, which is going to be crazy looking, but uh, I think it'd be cool. <laughs> all right, my friends, well, thank you for watching, and I will see y'all in the next upcoming videos. I have a few that you're really going to like here soon, all right? Well, my friends, I'll see y'all later.